Okay, it's time for our last instalment, uh, synthesis of copper oxalate. So again, I'm going to go through the method, uh, picking out just a few as to why we would do them, problems associated, and also um, improvements as well. Okay, so uh, the first thing we have to do is, obviously we're going to be using uh, copper oxalate monohydrate, we're going to be adding 15 centimeter cubed of distilled water using a measuring cylinder. Okay, and then to that, we're then, uh, well, separately, we're going to be weighing out two grams of copper sulfate and adding 10 centimeter cubed of distilled water using a measuring cylinder. Now, again, uh, part of what we're doing is we're using measuring cylinders as a way of um, measuring a volume. Uh, and as I've mentioned previously, um, Measuring cylinders aren't the most precise way of measuring volume. And in fact, with things like water, it's easier, uh, I suppose, as an improvement, um, is to weigh it. Because 15 centimetre cubed of distilled water will weigh 15 grams. 10 centimetre cubed of distilled water will weigh 10 grams. So again, you could weigh that water as an improvement. So we're knowing exactly the amount that we're going to be putting in there okay just a bit of a thought there then the next one we're going to be do is we're going to need to heat this and we're heating using a bunsen burner monitoring it uh, the temperature in the beaker at 60 degrees c um, and we're going to be adding the copper sulfate solution to the oxalate solution with stirring okay now again when we're doing this um, it might be that whilst we're doing it we're not getting sufficient stirring we're stirring it to keep the reactants moving so the uh, the potassium oxalate monohydrate reacting with the copper sulfate pentahydrate um, again it might be that we're not stirring it properly we're not maybe not monitoring the temperature as well which of course we need that temperature to drive the reaction. So it could be <clears throat> that we could use a temperature probe to measure uh, the, the reaction temperature. We can maintain that better knowing that, but also with stirring, it might be that we look at different ways of doing that, maybe using um, a magnetic stirrer. So you've got a constant movement of that solution and then moving on, we have to cool it down to form ice crystals and then we do vacuum filtration. And this water has got to be ice cold. So we want it ice cold so that the crystals are coming out of solution. We can filter them. But one of the things that we notice when we do this filtration is that in the Buckner flask at the bottom, we've got the crystals in the Buckner funnel. The solution actually still um, is coloured blue. So there's a potential there that we've still got some of our um, copper oxalate remaining there. And that can impact on our yield. Uh, and that's something that we have to think about. We wash it with ethanol, um, what's in the button flask. And of course, that's to help, uh, obviously, as a final clean, but also to help get rid of more moisture. So it's just a few things that you need to think about there with the method. So moving on, I said to you that the mass of product form was 2.37 grams. And of course, we have to then determine percentage yields and atom economy. So percentage yield, actual yield divided by theoretical yield times by 100. So to work out the theoretical yield, um, First thing we need to do is we know from this reaction that one mole of copper sulfate gives us one mole of copper oxalate. We can work out then, um, we know the MR of our copper sulfate pentahydrate, 249.6. We use two grams in the method. So moles equals M over MR. So two divided by 249.6 gives us 0 0.008 moles. As we said previously, one mole to one mole. So we've got a one to one molar ratio. 
So therefore, moles of copper sulfate equals moles of copper oxalate, which is 0 0.008 moles. If we use N equals M over MR, rearrange that. Therefore, M equals N times MR. So it's 0 0.008 times by 353.7. And 353.7 is the MR of copper oxalate. That should give us 2.83 grams. So from the previous page, the actual yield. So what we extracted was 2.37 grams. Percentage yield will be 2.37 divided by 2.83 times 100 gives us 83.6 grams. So moving on. I'm going to look at our calculation of purity and I'll come back to atom economy in a minute. So I gave you um, some data for your titration, uh, which I'm just trying to find. There we go. So we've got four different titrations were done. Four different masses of the uh, copper oxalate were used. And of course, we had four different volumes recorded. Okay, so from there we want to use two that are uh, within 0 0.1 of each other. So we're going to use numbers 2 and 3. Therefore we're going to use the masses from 2 and 3 as well. So average mass will be 0 0.2525 plus 0.2529. Divide that by 2 gives us 0 0.2527. Average tighter. 28.2 plus 28.1 divided by 2 gives us 28.15 centimetres cubed. Um, we then asked to calculate the number of moles of potassium permanganate. The concentration used was 0 0.02 moles per decimeter cubed. So if we do 0 0.02 times 28.5 divided by 1,000, because I haven't, that's to factor in that the uh, tighter volume was in centimetres cubed, that will give us 5.63 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of potassium permanganate. Now when it comes to working out moles of oxalate, okay, we're still using molar ratios. This is what we've got to realize. Um, and we're just carrying on that process. So if we look at our second equation here, potassium permanganate to oxalic acid, oxalic acid, sorry, is a two to five, or you could reduce that down to a one to 2.5, okay? So because of that, we can say moles then of our oxalic acid equals moles of potassium permanganate times by 2.5, which is 5.63 times 10 to the minus 4, which I've got from here, times by 2.5, which gives us 1.4075 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of our oxalic acid. And of course, the question is asking about copper oxalate. So if we look at the top one, we can see our copper oxalate to oxalic acid is a ratio of 1 to 2. Okay, so from that, we can say that moles of our uh, copper oxalate equals moles of oxalic acid divided by 2. So it would be 1.4075 times 10 to minus 3 divided by 2, which gives us 7.073, uh, 7.0375 times 10 to minus 4 moles. Mass of copper oxalate, we're going to use N equals M over MR. Therefore, M equals N times MR. So 7.0375 times 10 to the minus 4 times by 353.7. That's the MR of copper oxalate. Gives us 0 0.2489 grams. Purity, 0 0.2489 grams that we calculated in number 4 divided by the average mass. 2.0.2527 times 100 gives us 98.5% purity. That's a high percentage purity. So the next thing um, we could talk about then is I'm just taking a step back where we can work out our um, atom economy. Okay, so atom economy, as you remember, is the mass of desired product divided by mass of reactants times 100. Uh, and I've written down here the MRs of each one. So the copper sulfate pentahydrate, 
the uh, potassium oxalate, monohydrate, and also the calcium, uh, sorry, not calcium, the copper oxalate as well. Um, so we put our MRs into the equation. So 353.7 divided by 249.6 plus two lots of 184.2. And the reason I've done two lots is because there's two moles of the potassium oxalate times that by 100 that's going to give us 52.7 percent okay so only 52.7 percent of the atoms within the starting material the reactants are converted into the desired product okay so effectively you can say 47.3 percent is going into products that they don't desire that they don't need could be impurities okay so that's something just to think about and then lastly when we're looking at improvements um, I was talking about ways that can affect percentage yield earlier when I talked about the method ways of looking at percentage purity again might be to do with the way that we're washing it we're using cold water we can filter it more we could do more ethanol uh, washing to improve it but improving atom economy the only way we can improve atom economy is as we talked about with the aspirin synthesis we'd have to look at a different synthetic route it's not one that you're going to do but again we could look at another way and if we think about atom economy is massive desired product well we can't change that because we want to make copper oxalate divided by the mass of the reactants so this is the section that we would change so if we're wanting this to be a bigger number this side needs to be smaller so instead of using copper sulfate pentahydrate we're going to have a look at using copper chloride pentahydrate instead that is an MR of 197.5 so we're going to do the calculation so massive desired again the copper oxalate is 353.7 divided by 197.5 plus two lots of our potassium oxalate times by 100 gives us 62.5 percent so if you think our original was 52.7 percent we've now gone up to 62.5 it's nearly 10 percent more okay so we can say with this synthetic route potentially more of our starting materials our reactants are converted into desired product and I will leave it there. Good luck.